This is Michelle Sisler, owner of Keys to Imagination, and I would like to welcome back Karen Koch, the original founder of the Music Educators Marketplace, now part of the Keys to Imagination family. Karen has a fantastic video series on how you can easily incorporate music history into your lessons in a meaningful way. In this video, Karen shares ideas for making music history relatable and memorable with ideas you can use today in lessons. Hello again. In an earlier video, I talked about how it help, is helpful to students to learn music history by sequencing the periods and color coding each of these periods so that they have a clue as to the characteristics of the music of that period. So the color coding, if you uh, saw that video, is to use Baroque to, as the clue for the bro uh, yellow gold for the Baroque period because that was the music that was ornamented, associated with royalty, nobility, and high church. The classical period, being more refined and restrained, seemed appropriate for the blue. The, 20th, the Romantic period was appropriate for the emotional aspect, the content, the strong emotional content of music of the Romantic period. And of course, the 20th century is green. That's the color of growing things. And it's also a combination on the color wheel of blue and yellow, which are the elements that went before, but they were recycled and added and grow, grown into new forms in the 20th century. Now, of course, it's impossible to limit to include all of 20th century so that everything before or after 1600 to 2000 can be separated but this is a way of starting and simplifying the study of music history now i'd like to share with you some ways of using that color coding and helping to students to relate to music history without having to use dates because many times the dates glaze over the eyes and students tune out because they seem so confusing. So let's talk about a few ideas for making music history more interesting and more memorable. So the first idea I'd like to share is to, when you're assigning a piece, simply take the color of that composer's period, swipe that color through his name with a highlighting pen, and then every time the student is to practicing, they actually see that subconsciously, maybe, uh, the color and are able to relate it. And pretty soon they will be able to see the Scarlatti in the Bach and the Handel pieces that are all gold and begin to see relationships between them based on the repertoire that they study or that they may hear from fellow students. Another idea is to color code your own music library. You can use those little tiny coding dots that are available in an office supply store and just give students that idea. Sometimes I have found that students love to have a, a balanced menu, so to speak, of the music. And uh, if they have fewer pieces in the romantic period, sometimes they will request uh, music. And that having a varied diet of music is wonderful sometimes. Of course, sometimes they just want 20th century music and we understand that or even 21st century and that's fine too. Um, another way of uh, using this color coding is to organize your recital by musical periods. You could have students dress in the color of the period of the, their piece. Um, there are lots of ways of organizing that as far as refreshments and other things. Your imaginations can go crazy on that if you want to. Um, <clears throat> another thing is when you're assigning, if you have a written assignment, to just use that highlight and put a splash of color beside your Bach piece. So that would be gold and maybe the um, Bergmuller piece would have a little red splash so that it makes the assignment more colorful. But it also, again, is a very quick way of referring to the historical relationships between different kinds of music. Um, it's easy also to share references to, to the periods just in passing in conversation and music without making a big deal out of having a whole project for music history. Um, notice that I don't talk about dates very much, but they can gradually be added and they will need to be added at some point. It seems to be helpful 
to use the historical events that students are studying in their school classes to relate to the music history events. So for example, the date of 1620, which many students learn very early in their school classes uh, around Thanksgiving for the Pilgrims landing at Plymouth. Um, it's easy then to relate that to 65 years later, 1685, which was the bonanza year for Baroque composers. Bach, Scarlatti, Handel, all born in that same year. And that's an interesting fact that sometimes is very helpful for students to understand, even though they were born in different countries, different traditions, but they are the best known of the Baroque composers that for a period that lasted 150 years, all born the same year. Another way of relating to uh, a date that students already know is the Declaration of Independence in 1776. That is the beginning of a new nation in this United States. But in Europe, Mozart was 20 years old and he was already a child star. And then you might pose the question, do you suppose Benjamin Franklin ever heard of Mozart? Do you suppose he knew anything about him? Um, these, their ways of making this music, the dates, relate to students' experience. And that is the final thing I'd like to mention uh, in making this uh, music history approach work and making it of interest on the fly. Um, and that is when you are relating to students, maybe presenting a piece, you can ask uh, from the, the, the most proven way of uh, making music, uh, making new information effective is to build it on something that is known and then build onto it with the unknown. So you can start with perhaps a student. Um, did your grandmother take piano lessons? Did you realize she probably learned this same piece and it was already 200 years old when she learned that piece? Because for a student, their grandmother's time was way back in the past. And this is, again, extending, giving them a sense of the time that is elapsing and how long these pieces are popular, have been popular, and have why they're cl considered classics. So, um, frequently referring to the structure that is related to each period and so forth. <clears throat> uh, Alberti bass and the classical period, some of those concepts uh, begin to make sense when they see that they are a fad or a fashion uh, characteristic of each musical period. So in, I'd just like to encourage you to throw in music history as long as they have this overview of music history and you can relate to those colors. It's a very helpful way. I hope these ideas will give you some encouragement and make it easy for you to help your students open that wide world of music history, which is so fascinating. Thanks for listening. Karen has written an amazing program for music history called My Own Music History that will help you easily incorporate music history into your lessons. Be sure to check out her series, as well as Sally Ritchie's Composer Chaos Game at keystoimagination.com. So there you have it, some ways to easily help make music history memorable for students. Thanks for sharing, Karen, and thank you for watching.